I'm real glad we finally got this chance to talk, Peter. I can just imagine how crazy your life has been lately. Especially since I told you that I know you're Spider-Man. What am I going to do? How can I ever convince Mary Jane that she's wrong about my secret identity? Should I even try? I care about Mary Jane. I really do. Heck, I even proposed to her once. What's the harm in her knowing that I'm Spider-Man? But she can be so flaky at times. Can I really trust her with my greatest secret? Relax, Peter. I know what you're thinking about, and you needn't worry. I'm not the space cadet I appear to be. It's funny. We've known each other for a long time, but we really don't know each other. We're supposed to be best friends, but we never open up to each other. We don't share. We're a great pair, aren't we? I guess I never quite looked at it like that. Friendship carries some pretty big responsibilities, but we've just been coasting along. I do that a lot. Sometimes I think I've spent my whole life running away from that kind of responsibility. I guess I get that from my parents. Did I ever tell you about them? They met in college. Mom was a drama student and dad majored in modern American literature. Oh, they were so in love in those days. They just couldn't wait to get married. After graduation, Mom wanted to move to New York City to try her hand at acting. But Dad had other ideas. Be sensible, Madeline. I've already been offered a teaching position. It's only a small college out in the middle of nowhere, but it is a start. Oh, Philip, I'd move to Siberia if it would make you happy. They were married about 18 months when they had my sister, Gail. I was born four years later. As the years passed, Dad became a full professor. He was popular with his students, and the college administration respected him. Mom devoted her life to us kids. My parents must have looked like they had it all. But Dad wasn't satisfied. He wanted to write, to prove to the world that he had the skill and talent to be another Fitzgerald, a Faulkner. He didn't. No! No! It isn't coming out right! It's trash! Everything I write is trash! Can't you keep those kids quiet? Madeline, it's your fault I can't concentrate! Hush, girls. Your father is trying to work. But we weren't doing anything, Mama. I know, sweetheart. Dad began switching jobs, moving from one college to the next. I don't know what he was looking for, but he never seemed to find it. Mom endured the constant moving, even though she hated it. I wasn't wild about it either. As a result, Gail and I were always changing schools. It wasn't easy to make friends, but I really wanted the other kids to like me, to notice me. We have a new student, Mary Jane Watson. That's me, the one and only. I guess I became a bit of a class clown. Gail handled her loneliness differently. She began to study dance. She would practice for hours, just her and her music. Meanwhile, things continued to get worse between mom and dad. I never wanted a house or children. They're anchors holding me down. And then, one day... Enough! Those bloody dance lessons are costing me a fortune! Philip... No! Not the children! Don't take your frustrations out on them, too! I couldn't believe my father had actually struck Gail. I felt helpless, enraged. I didn't know what to do, so I began to run. Hey, Mary Jane, where are you going in such a hurry? You okay? You look like something's wrong. 
wrong? Are you kidding? Nothing's ever wrong with Mary Jane Watson. Mom finally gave up on her marriage a few weeks later, while my father was being honored by his college. We slipped out of the house while he was still at the awards ceremony. I guess Mom just couldn't face them anymore. A messy divorce followed. Dad sued her for desertion, and the court wasn't very sympathetic towards her. We didn't have much money, so we were forced to turn to family for help. I still don't see why we've got to take them in. They're kin, and they've got nowhere else to go. It wasn't easy on us, being shuffled from one set of relatives to another, but I tried to make the most out of it. Oh, darling, you're so cute I could die. <laughs> That's a great Aunt Martha, Mary Jane. It's funny, but there was only one relative that I enjoyed visiting. My father's sister, Aunt Anna. She always made me feel so at home. Mary Jane, I want you to meet my friend, May Parker. She has a nephew who's only a year older than you. I must have been around 13 when I first laid eyes on you, Peter. You were just starting high school, and you looked so serious. A real bookworm. Do you remember how our aunts were always trying to get us together? Do you, Peter? Peter? How could I forget? Aunt May was always trying to set me up with Anna Watson's niece, but I still managed to put off meeting you for years. Foolish boy. Don't blame me. I was only told that you had a great personality, and you know what that means. When I think of all the time I wasted avoiding you... That's the trouble with time, Peter. It has a nasty habit of slipping away from us. Whatever happened to your father? He moved to Oregon some years ago, and he didn't even bother to say goodbye. I wrote to him a few times, but he never answered my letters. After a while, I stopped trying. Meanwhile, Mom had finally found us a permanent place to live, with her cousin, Frank Brown. Frank was a steel worker whose wife had died the year before. He took us in on the condition that Mom would keep house for him, and his three children. Living with Frank was quite an experience. He was a hard man, stern, unforgiving, but he did treat us fairly. And he brought a certain amount of stability to our lives. That's when Gail first started dating Timmy. Timmy Burns! Oh, he was such a hunk in high school. I was half in love with him myself. I remember how happy Gail was. Everything was finally coming together for her. Her dance teacher was certain she had a real shot at a college scholarship. She was living every young girl's fantasy. Not only was her boyfriend the captain of the football team, but he was one of the school's top scholars, too. The National Honor Society welcomes Timothy Burns to its ranks. Yeah, things look great. It's a shame fantasies don't work out in real life. Gail kept studying and working at her art. She loved to dance. She really did. But it was real obvious that she loved Timmy even more. As for me, I was busy with the school's drama department. Juliet, wherefore art thou? Here I am, Tiger! Needless to say, my first few performances lacked a certain... polish. As the school year drew to a close, Gail dropped her big bomb. Timmy and I have decided to get married as soon as we graduate high school. What? Are you crazy? You're throwing away your chance for college! For everything! You can't tell me how to live my life, Mom! Not after the mess you made of yours. In the end, Gail had her way. They were married in a simple church ceremony. Soon after that, they left town. Timmy planned to enter a pre-law college program in the fall, and Gail was going to take a job to help support them. For some crazy reason, that seemed very romantic to me at the time. Pretty dumb, huh? 
The next year was a wild time for me. I was 15 and life was beautiful. I even acted in a few more plays. I have always depended on the kindness of strangers. It wasn't bad. And then I received the letter. It's from Gail. She's coming to visit. She has a surprise for us. I wonder what it is. When they arrived, we found out. Oh, Gail, I'm so happy for you and Tim. Yeah, everyone was happy for them. Well, almost everyone. I still remember the day the baby was born. He was the cutest little boy. But the expression on Timmy's face... He was only 19, but he looked so haggard, so desperate, like some caged animal. Or a drowning man who had just been tossed an anchor. Come on, Mary Jane, it couldn't have been that bad. I thought he loved your sister. He did, but that didn't change the facts. Timmy had barely finished his first year of college. He loved Gail, I'm sure he did, but that didn't mean he could accept the responsibility for raising a family. True love. Ha! It doesn't stand a chance against reality. What good is it anyway? You okay? Yeah, I guess so. I was just thinking about Timmy Burns. He really wasn't such a bad guy. I don't think he ever meant to hurt Gail. Or anyone else. He was just a kid who let his life get out of his control. Poor Timmy. He had always dreamed of attending law school, but he was only in his second year of undergraduate study, and he already had a wife and baby to support. Think of the strain he must have been under, the pressure. No wonder his grades began to slip, and his marriage began to fail. You're the reason I can't study properly, you and your kid. Gail was confused, desperate. She started calling mom for advice, for support, that led to other arguments. Get off the phone, Madeline. Let the kids solve their own problems. Frank, please! My daughter needs me. Maybe Uncle Frank was right. Maybe my mother shouldn't have gotten so involved. She hadn't been feeling well for months, and those phone calls certainly weren't doing her any good. I know I tried to shut Gail and Timmy out of my mind. I was only in high school. Proms and parties. That's all I wanted to think about. But then, Gail called with a rather startling announcement. Mom, I... I'm pregnant again. That's wonderful, sweetheart. Mom still wasn't in the best of health, but she decided to celebrate Gail's news with a surprise visit. She truly believed that a second child would force Timmy to accept his responsibilities, would heal the marriage. But... Gail, what's wrong? Where's Timothy? He's gone. He's gone. Packed his bags and left. Said he couldn't cope with the thought of another child. I suppose I should have hated Timmy for what he'd done to Gail. But I couldn't. Not when I wanted to run away, too. Don't worry, dear. Your sister and I won't desert you. I'll phone your Uncle Frank and tell him we're staying here. In the months that followed, Mom's health continued to deteriorate. She grew weaker and weaker until she had to be hospitalized. That's when we first learned she was dying. My whole world was rapidly bursting apart. To help with the bills, I dropped all my extracurricular activities, including drama club, and devoted myself to a series of after-school jobs. With all her grief, my mom still had one last dream. She was determined to live long enough to see her second grandchild. She didn't make it. I know things look pretty bad now, Mary Jane, but find a way to make things work out. Trust me. Once I have this baby, I'll get a full-time job. And you won't have to work so hard after school. We can find someone to watch the kids during the day and- No! 
No! Your kids are your problem. I've got my own life to live. And I'm not going to waste it, like Mom wasted hers! You and Mom, and even Timmy, gave up your dreams because you wanted to make someone else happy! Well, that's not going to happen to me! Mary Jane, wait. No! I want more out of life! Much more! Poor Gail. I never looked back at her. I just started running. And in one way or another, I've been running ever since. It's almost been four years since I last saw my sister. Her second child was another baby boy. Cute little guy, too. Aunt Anna showed me pictures when he was born. I only wish Mama could have lived to see him. Why don't you go see him? Maybe you and your sister could finally come to terms. I don't think that's possible, Peter. Too much time has passed. I've phoned Gail a few times over the years, mostly on holidays and the kids' birthdays. She's never happy to hear from me. I don't think she's ever forgiven me for deserting her. I really don't blame her. I've never forgiven myself either. My Aunt May once told me that Mary Jane and I had a lot in common. You've both lost so very much. Aunt May, I've even lost her recently. She hasn't spoken to me since I told her that I dropped out of graduate school. I really should have straightened things out between us long before now. But I've just been so busy lately. I just hope I haven't let too much time pass. And I still don't know what to do about Mary Jane knowing my secret identity. The girl just bared her soul to me. How can I lie to her now? I really didn't mean to lay all my grief on you, Peter. It just sort of came out. You're a good listener. In a funny way, I suppose that makes us even. How do you mean? I know your greatest secret, and now you know all of mine. Peter, I never meant to tell you that I knew you were Spider-Man. I didn't know how you'd react. In fact, I almost ran out on you again. But I couldn't. I care about you, Peter. I really do. I may find it real hard to cope with the fact that you get your kicks by risking your neck, but that doesn't change my feelings for you. Look, I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not talking about love. I know, Mary Jane. I guess I feel the same way about you. And I just want you to know that your ever-amazing Spider-Man is real proud to count you among his friends. Oh, Peter, you could be such a cornball. What's going to happen to us now? Who knows? Maybe we should just take it one day at a time.